How does it feel to make history? Woo! Welcome to National Plug-in Day. Thank you very much for coming, and let's get this thing on the road. So I've had my Volt 11 months now. I have 11,800 miles on it. 11,000 of those miles are all electric for the battery, and I've only used 22 gallons of gas this year. We wanted to show America that electric cars are here, and they can fit into your lifestyle, and there are a range of options. Cars, trucks, and motorcycles. We had Volt, Teslas, Kodas. Nissan Leafs, Wigos, Mitsubishi, Aimea, Smart EVs, Fisker. There was more variety of electric vehicles in that parade than ever assembled in the world, ever. Some Americans are actually just fine with the range of today's electric vehicles and are proud to show their EVs off. That's what's in this week's Energy Now Hot Zone. No oil, no gas, no sound. It's a beautiful day. EV lovers joined together for National Plug-in Day in 26 cities last weekend, including Santa Monica, California, where drivers paraded Fisker Automotive's luxury Karma, Coda's more compact sedan, and what looked like a Batmobile. A big standout, though, was this delivery truck whose driver said it gets about 100 miles per charge. Plug-in America was interested in doing something like this parade uh, because our first parade was very successful. And we thought, well, now that we have a lot more cars out there, we can make a bigger showing, get a bigger splash in the press. Today is National Plug-in Day, a day organizers use to recognize the benefits of electric vehicles. Cities across the nation are holding special events, including one right here in Austin. The reason National Plug-in Day was so important is because it's very important for our country to get off of oil. This was the best way that we felt we could communicate to the average consumer, consumer to consumer, to see hundreds of car owners driving cars in a parade and saying, hey, look at these cars. They're fun, they're fast, they're clean, they're cheap to drive. You should go out and, and check one out. You should drive one and see if you like it. Bet you will. I got my RAV on March 10th, 2002. I have 117,000 oil-free miles on it. And uh, just got our Nissan LEAF in April. We've got uh, 4,350 oil-free on that. So my other car is a LEAF. 93,995. <laughs> That's a good one. 36,000 miles on our Tesla Roadster, two and a half years old. This one, uh, I get about 150 miles of range. I've driven it to Palm Springs a couple times. This is a Fisker Karma. This is uh, number three out of 100 built. And we get our demonstrators um, Wednesday, and we go on sale in November. 3,914 miles. I use it as my commuter car. So I commute about four, between 40 to 50 miles a day. So it's perfect for me, and I love it. I used to have a Nissan Sentra, so this drives just like my Nissan Sentra. So I, I like it a lot. Got my 2012 Volt. I haven't used one ounce of gas. I'm excited. It's fantastic. It's the best thing I've ever done. I have been to a gas station twice. I mean, sometimes it says you get 108 miles per gallon. But the best part is you can, while you're stopped, you can watch a movie when you're waiting for things. It doesn't work while you're driving. I never knew how much time I wasted in gas stations until I started driving electric cars. I charge it at work. I'm able to make it home and back to work without charging. Uh, I got the RAV4 down there. I uh, had the EV Plus before that and had a converted Pontiac Faro before that. So I've got 234,000 miles total since 1992 and I haven't had a gas car since 1994. <laughs> so it's awesome. This is a 1997 S10. Uh, it's an OEM from GM. This is where it charges. The stealth charge port. This is the same electronics that was in the EV1. One of the really interesting things is that we had two rental car companies at the parade, Simply Hybrid and Enterprise Rental Car. This is a car rental that has been very successful with us. It's been utilizing more than any car I have in the fleet. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. This is somebody running out for a day. They brought it back in one month and one week. They kept the whole car for a month and a week. We were like, 
Okay, I think we need to buy another one. Somebody rented that car and they loved it so much they just kept it. Five weeks. The whole summer of that car, I didn't even see it. So Mitsubishi I mean, going on sale next month. Four incentives, around $28,000 for the base version. 112 miles MPGE, most efficient car in the United States. What, what it takes to get people interested in these cars really is just a test drive. That's it. You know, you, you can talk to your blue in the face and people will kind of understand it. Isn't it nice and quiet on the street today? But until they get behind the wheel and step on that accelerator and feel that acceleration, but they don't hear the noise, and they don't feel the vibration. It's just this smooth, strong, powerful acceleration. They realize, oh my God, this is a really good car. And then you can start telling them about all the social implications. You know, there's no war for electricity, there's no pollution, you know, you're not sending money out of the country, all these other things, which just bolsters their, their newfound understanding and, and realization that this car is truly a, a life-changing vehicle. With all the troubles that we have in the world, you know, things are happening very quickly in the economic scene. Uh, you know, the Occupy Wall Street is, is gaining ground all over the world. And a lot of that is stemming from how the banks and, and the large corporations have been essentially raping our, our economy. You know, they're taking so much money out of the general circulation and hoarding it. They've got two and a half trillion dollars sitting there unused. And much of that is oil money. A huge percentage of it is oil money. So the, the oil companies are absorbing massive amounts of capital and not really doing anything to help the economy with it. And that's money from all of us. Everybody who gets an electric car stops giving them their money. They keep most of it for themselves. They'll pay a little bit to the utilities for the electricity, but the rest of it they get to spend on things they want to buy. And that will increase the economic vitality of our country more than any single thing. Instead of sending $400 billion every year out of the country to buy foreign oil, that money will stay here and circulate through our economy, creating wealth, creating jobs. And that's what we've got to do as fast as we can do it. And having these kind of events gets the word out even more so more people realize the, the truth of it and will buy these cars. And it's going to snowball very quickly once production ramps up in the next year or two. I'm gonna drive my electric car